So if you've watched my Nokia 5.3 review, you'd know that I think it has a very, very competent camera, especially for its price range. So I got this crazy idea. Why don't I compare it to the mainstream camera phone king, the iPhone 11, just to see how big of a gap there is between a budget device and a device that costs about four times as much. And can we actually reduce this gap if we know what we were doing with photo editing, pictures taken from the 5.3? to make them mimic the pictures taken with the iPhone 11. So that's what we're here to find out. So let's go over the specifications of the cameras of every device. I'll start with the 5.3, which has four cameras on its back. So the main camera is a 13 megapixel unit with an aperture of f1.8. And you also have a five megapixel ultra wide camera and two two megapixel cameras, one for macro images and the final one for depth and bokeh effects. And on the other side of the table, you have the iPhone 11, which has two 12 megapixel sensors. One as the main camera with an aperture of f1.8 and the ultra wide sensor, which is also 12 megapixels. So the iPhone's main advantage is that the sensors it has on its back are much larger than the ones found on the Nokia. And I also really like the camera interface, which is easy to use and captures images very quickly. The iPhone also has a much more advanced night mode. On the other hand, the Nokia has four cameras on its back, which is two more than what the iPhone has. One of these lenses is a depth sensor, which really helps with bokeh effects and it helps at combat portrait mode on the iPhone. So let's see how they match up. So in the end, it is still definitely worth buying a more expensive device like the iPhone, if you are passionate about photography. I love how it effortlessly produces excellent images in almost any given situation. They have perfected the experience of letting the phone do all the thinking for you. On the other hand, the Nokia 5.3 truly impressed me with how well it managed to keep up in some situations, mainly daylight. Its color science is good but it lacks the dynamic range and finer details that the larger sensor on the iPhone has. With some tweaking, you can get them to look incredibly close. The biggest surprise for me was that the Nokia actually took better bokeh images. Not in terms of image quality, but in terms of subject separation. So this is a video sample captured on the Nokia 5.3 in 4K. And this is a 4K sample captured on the iPhone 11. In low light, on the other hand, the gap is simply too big to overcome. The Nokia punches above its weight in night mode, but it still falls short of the excellent images the iPhone can consistently produce. Its autofocus gets in the way, and the finer details and the darker areas of the image are just completely lost. For social media use, it will be perfectly acceptable, but for anything more than that, the extra money spent on the iPhone is worth it. Well, maybe not four times worth it, but almost perfect will always be exponentially more expensive than just good enough. So what do you guys think about this image comparison? Do you think the Nokia can keep up with the iPhone in certain situations? Do you think it's worth the price gap? Let me know in the comments down below. Please share, like, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.